We'll fancy seeing you back here again. Wanna learn more about the Bible? Me too, let's go. So in the Old Testament, we read about what was called the tabernacle. Now, sometimes there's some confusion here about what the difference is between the tabernacle and the temple, so let me explain. The tabernacle is what was used during the time of Moses and when the children of Israel were traveling around in the desert. Now, it was really more of a tent that could be set up and taken down, but it was where God's presence was with the people at that time. Fast forward some to the time of King David. Yeah, same guy who killed the giant with the slingshot. Well, David is given instructions from God on building the temple, which was really supposed to be a permanent structure. Now, David didn't actually end up being the one who built it, but it was his son Solomon who we later read about in the Old Testament. Now here's how both the tabernacle and the temple were divided up. You had the outer court, the holy place, and then the most holy place, also known as the Holy of Holies. And this last spot was where God's presence actually dwelt with the people. So anyone could enter the outer court, but then only the priest could enter the holy place. And finally, the most holy place could only be entered by the high priest once a year. Now there are a ton of parallels here that are worth noting. Again, remember this quote by St. Augustine, the New Testament is the Old Testament concealed, the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. Do you know what this temple layout represents? Us and how God now dwells with us. The outer court is representative of your body. It's not perfect. It's a more common area that us as well as others have access to. Next is the holy place. This is representative of your mind, your emotions, your thoughts. Now this of course is kept to ourselves unless we choose to share it with others. But finally the most holy place is representative of your spirit. This is where God's spirit dwells with us today. When you talk about Jesus coming into your heart, this is what this is. It's God God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, dwelling on the inside of you. Now, isn't it amazing and beautiful how all this ties together? So I love the internet. I use it every day. My phone, my work, these videos, everything. But you know, in order to access the internet from my phone, I have to be paying for it. I have to pay my phone bill in order to get access to it. And in much the same way, God used to be like this in a sense. He was a private event that not anyone could just reach. You had to go through certain requirements, certain criteria to be able to even talk to him. But now imagine someone paying your phone bill forever, for the rest of your life. This is exactly what Jesus did for us. He gave us complete and total access to God for free with his sacrifice. Now let me show you one more thing in the Old Testament. There used to be a huge thick veil or a curtain, what we would call, that would separate the most holy place from everything else. But the Bible says that after Jesus died on the cross, the temple veil was ripped in two from top to bottom. Now do you know what this veil represented? Jesus himself. His body was broken for us so that God's presence didn't have to be hidden away from us any longer. And we now have complete access to God because of Jesus' sacrifice. Just amazing. Wow. Listen to verses 11 through 12. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption? Yes, please. Now, you know, sometimes when you talk about Jesus, people wonder, why is it so bloody? Like, why did Jesus have to die? Everything just seems so violent. But listen to verse 22. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. Jesus had to fulfill the law of the Old Testament by shedding his own blood. It was the only way to purify our sin. Believe me, Jesus obviously would have chosen a different way if there was one. In fact, right before he's about to be crucified, we read about Jesus praying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But he went willingly anyway so that you and I could be forgiven. I'll be honest, guys, that is a love that I will never be able to fully understand. It's like when people tell you Jesus loves you, it's almost impossible to convey the enormity of that statement. He loves you like no one you have ever known. Guys, that is it for us today. So, so, so much good stuff in this chapter, and I love being able to go through it with you all. Make sure to come back tomorrow. We are picking up in chapter 10. 10 already. Time go. Love you guys. I know you know that. Hope you go out and have the best day ever. We will see you back here tomorrow.